Okay guys, so today we have a lot to talk about because I just finished graduation day, the third and final installment of the testing series by Joelle Charbonneau. The last thing I would want to do is spoil the book for you, so if you haven't read it, please read it and come back once you have. Of course, I'm going to do my spoiler-free review of this book, however, if you haven't read the first two books, it's not completely spoiler free because I'm going to be talking about what is happening in the beginning of the third story a little bit, which will kind of give away some of the things that have happened in the first two. So yes, I'll be giving a spoiler free review, but that will be for people who have read books one and two. Then I will be giving my spoiler filled review for people who have finished book three and want a second opinion. I know some people are kind of stubborn like me and finish a video about a book they haven't read yet thinking it'll be fine and then have something spoiled for them. I don't want that. Anyway, once again, Sia is placed in the position of having to make a very difficult decision all while trying to balance her morals and values with the tough nature that comes with being a leader. Rafe starts out the book with a warning that Professor Holt is looking for Sia because of something that happened in the second book with another candidate. So Professor Holt is questioning Sia about this other candidate, and Sia realizes that she is going to have to go through with the request that the president has asked of her against all of her morals. My name is Sarah Cater, and you're watching Aliens, Clones, and Airships. So, like the others in this series, this book is full of ethical decision-making, life or death situations, and dishonest and untrustworthy people. One of the common themes in this series is the idea of do the ends justify the means, which is something that Sia asks herself all the time. Is killing kids for the opportunity to have better leaders for the country worth it? And ultimately, is it worth killing the people who are in charge of the testing to save the lives of future students? When and can killing be necessary and okay? Sia also has to start questioning the motives of some of her classmates in order to determine whether or not she can trust them. A lot of unanswered questions from the series resurface in this book, and small hints throughout the entire series pull the entire story together and lead toward the ultimate conclusion of the book. Old alliances and enemies are once again questioned for trustworthiness, and even some of the rebels that Sia encounters are too dangerous for her to interact with. There's a lot of who is on whose side, and I think it really has a great take on the schooling system now, even though it's different in that students die if they answer a question wrong, it really parallels the idea that students today go through schooling and have all of this pressure to do well in high school, college, and graduate school. I can understand where all of the pressure comes from in these books, and I think any student reading this will also agree that the pressure these students feel, it's very similar to the way that most students probably feel in our schooling system here in the US. I don't want to say much more about this book in the non-spoiler section because the whole book is kind of spoilery. If you haven't read this book yet or the series, please come back and watch it after you've read them so that we can discuss this book in more detail. There's a lot of fun stuff going on in this series that I think we need to discuss. I really want to thank the viewers who have stuck through all of these videos with me, regardless of whether or not you've read this series. I know that it's been kind of tough to support me because if you haven't read any of these books, then you can't really watch these videos unless you just don't care about spoilers. So for those of you who have watched even just a few minutes to see the spoiler free stuff, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. It means a lot to me. Now I'm going to start my spoiler filled section. So if you haven't read the book yet, please pause and come back later. Alright, so if you're watching this, then you either don't care about spoilers, or you've read the book. So let's get down to the good stuff. President Collender wants Sia to kill off 12 people who are in charge of running the testing. There's so many ethical issues with that request that Sia has to face. 
because she doesn't consider herself a killer. Sia is forced to consider the president's request after her confrontation with Professor Holt about Damien's death. Sia knows, however, that she cannot act alone and get rid of 12 people on her own, so she works to enlist students from her school for the task. Before she can work with some of these students, however, she has to run some testing of her own. This part of the book really shocked me because she's so against the testing of students, the brutal nature of testing, and now she's running her own test, which understandably, you know, she needs to run some kind of little test to see if they're trustworthy people and if they can carry out this huge mission, but her test is a fatal one, which is what she's completely against. So that was a bit shocking to me. However, one of the classmates she chose, she didn't really test all that much, and that ended up being one of the people who harmed another student who is critical to the mission that Sia has. It bothered me that this character, Stasia, was chosen to help Sia with the mission because she was always kind of an untrustworthy person to begin with. She was always talking about how she would do anything to get ahead. Not that she cared about certain things or had certain morals, but just getting ahead. She would always blindly follow leaders in the hopes that one day she could become one. And then, against everything I thought I knew, Tomas ended up being a completely trustworthy person, and his only flaw was that he was extremely clingy around Sia. One of the things that annoyed me about the mission that they went on was the inclusion of Will, someone that, if you've read the previous books, you know is not a trustworthy person. He ended up hurting Sia and Tomas in the first book, and in the second book, he kind of was falling back into the same patterns during his induction that he followed in the first book. And then they include him in this mission, and I'm just like, why? <laughs> why would you do that? However, he did have his redemption in the end when he did as he was supposed to do and didn't sabotage anything, so I guess that was nice. I guess even cold-blooded murderers are able to have a redemption. The confrontation between Rafe and his father was extremely tense, and I think that was one of the hardest moments to get past while reading this book. To have to face your father, someone who is supposed to be loving and caring, but instead is in favor of the testing and the reason why your sister is missing. Rafe being part of this mission has the tough decision to hurt his father. All Rafe wanted was his sister back. There is a person in this book who ends up losing their lives. To me, it was unnecessary for this person to die. It didn't push the plot forward. It just kind of happened. It could have been written a different way in my mind. I'm not the writer. I just personally didn't like that this person ended up dying. The book is still great. I still loved everything about it except that one little part. This entire series was about trying to figure out who you could trust, how this entire system is gonna unfold. You get a lot of your questions answered during this story. I will not explain any more detail because I don't want to spoil it for anybody else who is watching this and has not read the rest of the book. Overall, I liked this book and the series as a whole. All of my personal questions were answered. Much like The Hunger Games, Divergent, and Unwind, I feel like I could reread the first book of this series over and over again. Whereas the next few books in the series, they're good and they advance the plot forward, but I don't think I can reread them over and over again. It's just not as exciting to me as the first installment was, which is totally fine. It doesn't have to be all, you know, blood and guts and gore and whatnot. I think that installments after the first one in each of the series I was talking about are great and they're great the first time you read them, but I just don't see myself rereading this book multiple times, maybe once more, twice more, and that's it. Whereas the first book, I feel like I could reread that a hundred times. I am content reading it and ending there. You may feel differently. Maybe you would read this book and say, wow, this book was fantastic. I have to read the series, the whole series, over and over and over again. And that's great. I encourage it because it is a great series. For me, I'm not someone who rereads an entire series like this over and over again unless it's like, wow, the whole time. But anyway, this is my review of Graduation Day. It was a lot of fun to read. I really encourage 
reading this story because the entire series is fabulous. Anyway, on my next video, I am going to be talking about After She's Gone by Lisa Jackson. And there's another video coming up soon about my favorite cover artists ever. And in that video, we're going to be interviewing each one of them, learning a little bit more about why they create book covers, what their favorite genres are, and how many books they've worked on. So you'll get a little taste of what it's like being a cover artist and the daily lives of a cover artist.